Leprosy. Leprosy was one of the most feared and misunderstood diseases of the medieval world. Known today as Hansen's disease, it's caused by the slow-growing bacterium Mycobacterium leprae, and in medieval Europe it was seen as a divine punishment, a physical manifestation of sin. The symptoms were horrifying, disfiguring skin lesions, thickened nerves, and the gradual loss of sensation in limbs. Over time, patients would injure themselves without realizing it, leading to infections, ulcers, and eventually the loss of fingers, toes, or entire limbs. The face could become grotesquely swollen, with a collapsed nose and sagging skin, leading to the classic image of the leper. But what made leprosy especially tragic was the social stigma. People with the disease were banished from society, forced to live in isolated leper colonies or hospitals far from cities. They often had to wear special clothing, carry bells to announce their presence, and were sometimes given funerals while still alive, legally declared dead by the church. Despite its slow spread and low contagiousness, Fear drove this brutal treatment. Leprosy was less a death sentence and more a slow erasure of identity, dignity, and human contact. Sweating sickness. Sweating sickness was a mysterious and terrifying disease that swept through England and parts of Europe in the late 15th and early 16th centuries. First recorded in 1485, it appeared suddenly, spread rapidly, and often killed its victims within hours. Unlike the more well-known plagues of the time, Sweating sickness didn't cause boils or rashes. Its horror lay in its speed and unpredictability. The disease began with a sense of dread, followed by violent chills, dizziness, and intense pain in the neck and limbs. Within minutes, victims would be drenched in sweat, their bodies pouring out fluid as they burned with fever. Most terrifying of all, the illness often killed within 3 to 18 hours. A person could feel perfectly fine in the morning and be dead by nightfall. No one knew what caused it. Physicians were baffled, and rumours spread that it was brought over by foreign mercenaries or linked to the mysterious miasmas, bad air thought to cause disease. It seemed to target the wealthy and powerful, even killing the brother of King Henry VIII. After several deadly outbreaks, the disease vanished as mysteriously as it had arrived. To this day, historians and scientists still debate its true cause. Was it a form of hantavirus? A virulent strain of influenza? The truth remains elusive. But in its time, sweating sickness was one of the most feared illnesses in Europe. Tetanus. In the medieval world, even a simple cut could be a death sentence, and tetanus was one of the most horrifying ways to go. Known as lockjaw due to its most infamous symptom, tetanus is caused by the Clostridium tetani bacterium, which thrives in soil, dirt, and animal feces. Once it enters the body through a wound, it produces a potent neurotoxin that attacks the nervous system. The progression was brutal. It often began with stiffness in the jaw, hence the name, but quickly spread to the neck, chest, and limbs. Muscles would begin to spasm uncontrollably, and victims could suffer from powerful full-body convulsions so intense they could snap bones. The face would contort into a grotesque grin called Rhesus sardonicus as facial muscles seized up. Breathing became difficult, and many died from asphyxiation or heart failure. With no antibiotics, vaccines, or modern wound care, Medieval medicine was helpless against it. Treatment involved ineffective herbal remedies, bloodletting, and prayer. Many saw the condition as divine punishment or demonic possession, especially given the unnatural postures and agonizing expressions it produced. Tetanus served as a grim reminder of how dangerous everyday injuries could be. In a time when hygiene was poorly understood and tools were often unsanitary, a minor scrape in a field or puncture from a rusty nail could turn into a horrifying slow death. Noma, Cancrum auris also known as Noma, was one of the most devastating and disfiguring diseases of the medieval period, though it's rarely talked about today. This gangrenous infection typically began in the mouth, usually affecting malnourished children or those with weakened immune systems. It started innocently enough, perhaps a sore in the gums or a small ulcer, but within days it would erupt into a monstrous facial wound that devoured flesh, muscle and bone. As the disease progressed, it caused massive tissue death around the mouth and cheeks, sometimes destroying the nose, lips, and jaw entirely. Victims would be left with gaping holes in their faces, exposed bone, and a horrific odor from rotting flesh. Survival was rare, and for those who did live, the scars were permanent, both physically and emotionally. In medieval times, Noma was poorly understood and often blamed on sin, demons, or foul humors. There were no effective treatments, 
Surgery was primitive and antibiotics didn't exist, so most sufferers were left to die in isolation. Because it mainly affected the poor and malnourished, it was seen as a disease of poverty, yet its gruesome nature made it one of the most feared conditions in Europe's darker corners. Cancrum oris didn't just kill, it erased faces, identities, and lives. Anthrax. In the medieval world, anthrax lurked in places most people wouldn't suspect. Animal hides, meat, and wool. Known historically as wool sorters disease, anthrax was an occupational hazard for those who handled livestock, particularly in trades like tanning, shearing, and butchering. Caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthracis, this disease could infect humans in several terrifying forms, through the skin, lungs, or digestive tract. The cutaneous form started with a small, itchy bump that quickly turned into a black necrotic sore, but the pulmonary version, contracted by inhaling spores, was far deadlier. It began with flu-like symptoms, but rapidly progressed to severe breathing problems, shock, and sudden death. In some cases, it could kill within 48 hours. Gastrointestinal anthrax, though rarer, caused internal bleeding, intense abdominal pain, and a swift, painful demise. In a time when the germ theory of disease didn't exist, anthrax was blamed on bad air, divine punishment, or poison materials. And because it could spread through trade goods like wool and hides, Outbreaks could appear suddenly and without warning. Entire workshops were sometimes shut down or shunned due to fear of contamination. What made anthrax especially horrifying in the medieval period was its invisibility. The spores could lie dormant for decades in soil or fabric, and there were no obvious early signs until it was too late. It was a silent killer, unseen, unstoppable, and often misunderstood. Smallpox Smallpox was one of the deadliest and most dreaded diseases of the medieval period. Caused by the variola virus, it spread rapidly through human contact, often devastating entire towns and cities in just a few weeks. In a world without vaccines or effective treatments, smallpox outbreaks could mean death for as many as 30% of those infected. And for survivors, permanent scarring or blindness was common. The disease began with high fever, fatigue, and severe body aches. But within days, a blistering rash would erupt, first on the face, then spreading across the body. These pustules were filled with infectious fluid and would harden, scab over, and fall off over the course of weeks. The pain was excruciating, and the scarring left behind could be so severe that survivors were permanently disfigured. In medieval Europe, smallpox was often confused with other fevers or skin diseases, but its horrifying appearance set it apart. The belief at the time was that it was a punishment from God or a result of imbalanced bodily humours. Treatments ranged from herbal compresses to bloodletting, but nothing stopped its march. What made smallpox especially terrifying was its relentlessness. It spared no one. Peasants, royalty, children, and the elderly were all at risk. And because immunity only came after surviving the disease, those lucky enough to live were marked for life, both physically and emotionally. Smallpox would continue to terrorize humanity for centuries until its eventual eradication in 1980. Ergotism. St. Anthony's fire, known today as ergotism, was one of the strangest and most terrifying afflictions of the medieval world. It wasn't spread by rats or bad air. It came from bread, specifically from rye grain contaminated with ergot, a fungus that produces toxic alkaloids. In a time when grain storage was primitive and food was scarce, Moldy bread wasn't discarded, it was eaten. And that's when the horror began. Ergotism came in two terrifying forms, gangrenous and convulsive. In the gangrenous type, blood flow to limbs was cut off, leading to burning pain, blackened flesh, and the slow, agonizing death of fingers, toes, arms, or legs. Limbs would literally rot while still attached to the body. In the convulsive form, Victims suffered from hallucinations, muscle spasms, seizures, crawling sensations on the skin, and fits of madness. Some danced uncontrollably or tore at their own flesh. People afflicted by it claimed to feel as if they were burning alive, hence the name St. Anthony's Fire. Monastic orders dedicated to St. Anthony often took in the suffering, offering care and spiritual aid, which gave the disease its name. In retrospect, ergotism was essentially a form of mass poisoning but medieval people believed it was divine punishment or demonic possession. Entire communities were sometimes affected, leading to panic, superstition, and even witch hunts. This bizarre disease blurred the line between sickness and sorcery, pain and punishment. It turned bread, the symbol of life, into a harbinger of madness, 
Syphilis. Syphilis, known during the medieval period as the French disease, was one of the most shocking and stigmatized infections to strike Europe in the late 15th century. First recorded in 1495 during a French invasion of Naples, it spread like wildfire across the continent, earning different names depending on whom people wanted to blame. Italians called it the French disease, the French blamed the Neapolitans, and the English sometimes called it the Great Pox. This sexually transmitted infection was horrifying in its progression. In the early stage, painful sores would appear on the genitals or mouth. If untreated, which it always was in the medieval world, it advanced to a secondary stage marked by skin rashes, fever, and swollen lymph nodes. But the worst came later, tertiary syphilis. It could ravage internal organs, destroy bone and cartilage, especially the nose and face, and cause extreme neurological damage, leading to madness, paralysis, and death. Victims often suffered in secret, but many developed visible, grotesque deformities. Mercury treatments were common, but incredibly toxic, and those afflicted were often isolated or shamed. The disease also became deeply entwined with moral judgment, seen as divine punishment for promiscuity or sinful living. Syphilis was more than a physical affliction, it was a social curse. It devastated individuals, ruined reputations, and fueled paranoia about sexuality and sin. With no cure, and no understanding of its true cause, the French disease haunted Europe for centuries as one of the most horrifying and humiliating illnesses of the era.